Hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. And today, we're going to be looking at a possible trade. Probably what happened at the deadline, but it could happen now. It's a big one. And uh, if you've been watching all of our content, we have been fairly accurate on the destinations of where players may go. To brink at, we had Ottawa as the second most likely team. Goudreau, who everybody was surprised that he went to Columbus, and I have to say I was somewhat surprised as well. I thought New Jersey had the inside track, but Columbus was our third most likely team that he would go to. And for various reasons, the reasons why were actually a lot of the reasons why I think he chose Columbus. Um, one of them being, you don't really know, people don't really know who you are in Columbus. It's not a huge hockey market. So he can go frolic about in the land and nobody really pays attention to it. And after being in Calgary for as long as he has, has been, I think he that would be kind of nice and for his family as well. So we're going to look at, so we got that, that right, and go check out our other ones. We have Klingberg in there. We did Klingberg. You might want to see where he might be heading off to. But today we're going to be looking at no one other than Patrick Kane. In fact, I did a Patrick Kane trade video up over about a year ago. And everybody in the land thought I was crazy. Chicago would never trade Kane, all of those sort of things like that. I saw a rebuild come in like a long time ago. Everybody, a lot of people did actually. And here he is. It sounds like we have an article that shows that, you know, it's pretty likely that by the deadline, Kane will move on. Um, so there's two ways of looking at that. Yeah, a team could do so now. And Chicago, I think, would probably like to now. In the article, it mentions this as well. But do you really want to have Kane on your roster making you better than you could be To when the, really the goal, obviously, with Chicago is to get Bedard, right? So that's great, except Kane has to okay any trade. And the only way he's going to okay a trade now instead of the deadline is if he's 100% sure that team's going to be a contender, right? He's going to at least be in the playoffs. So that puts a little crink in it. But that being said, we're going to look at Patrick Kane. We're going to look at his numbers. We're going to look at Chicago, what they may need. And we're going to look at eight teams that he may go. Plus, we're going to look at the article. Now, before I head in there, let me tell you that I, I love Kane as his career has been fantastic, but now he's not the player he once was. And I know you'll say he had, you know, decent, his point production was fairly high last year, and it was, but his defensive game is so diabolically bad. It is really, really bad. His defense is about as bad as his offense is good now. And his five on five is fading fast. A lot of his stuff is happening on the power play. That being said, I still think on the right team, there's huge value in a guy like Patrick Kane. So we're going to look at some teams and who I think would be best fit and who maybe most likely would be in on him either now or at the deadline. First, the article. Okay, here's the article. Uh... Let me get over here. This is uh, Shy City, but it comes from, uh, and this was a great article, by the way. I'm not usually, Shy City Sports is not something I read all the time, but I was flipping through articles and I found this, and they brought up Frank Cervalli, who I, Sarah Valley, who I really love. And this, this was, what, July 13th, about, as of right now, it would be about 12 days ago. A number of teams have inquired about Patrick Kane in the recent days, but they've been told a trade is unlikely at this time. Kane and the Chicago Blacks, uh, Blackhawks have been con in continuous dialogue. He liked to see how it goes, and it would be an in-season move, if at all. That's where it stands right now. And that doesn't stop me from doing a trade video, because it's still pretty exciting to think where he may end up, isn't it? Uh, the cards are in the hands of Kane. He has a full movement, no, no full, no movement clause. 
Um, it could go one of two ways. Kane could, yeah, decide to play it out of Chicago and leave for free, which would be disaster for Chicago. Um, and we all, and I doubt that, I, I just kind of doubt that would be the case. It would be a very uncomfortable move. Now, he has a girlfriend, and there could be some family reasons why that would happen. But um, first, it would be very harmful for the Blackhawks. And I think Kane will definitely help them get exactly what they want and even more if they take on a bad contract and make room. Right. And that's the other thing that they could do. Like, I, I my leaning is like uh, Kachuk in Calgary. Kane really has been given a pretty good life by the Chicago Blackhawks. They've treated him very, very well. And I know there's been some things that have come up in in – you know, has kind of put a black mark on the organization. But the truth is, Chicago has treated him well. He's, he got an enormous contract. He's been paid very well. He won three cups there. I really think Kane would like to help them a little bit for all they've done. I don't think you'd want to leave that kind of a black mark on them. Now, if it's a pure family thing, then I guess Chicago, it wouldn't leave any mark at all. But the offseason is the easiest time for teams to make bigger moves to send over high-paid players to another team. This way, they have the time to manage their contracts and money while in the midst of the season. Does Dealey and Patrick Kane at the deadline make more sense? Yes. The other way, Dealey and Patrick Kane at the deadline could actually work in the Blackhawks' favor, but could also be harmful for them overall. He is definitely waiting down to narrow down the teams, and that's the thing of doing it at the deadline. He's only going to go to teams that are in a playoff spot or more than that, a contender. Uh, and that would give less teams available. There would be less teams available for that option at that time. Uh, teams may be desperate to have an important player injured so they would be willing to add Kane. See, those are all things. Yeah, exactly. Injuries can happen, open up more spots. Uh, for him to want to go to. And so the more likely here, it's looking more towards a trade deadline. Now, it could happen before the deadline. I think uh, Chicago is going to be really bad this year. And I don't know if you played hockey. I didn't play at the highest levels or anything, but I have played on really bad teams. And, and And let me tell you, I don't care how much you love that organization or whatever, it is darn tough. Like It's easy to say I'm going to stick with it now, but when push comes to shove and you're really got to, and you're in the midst of a horrible season where you're just really never going to go anywhere, I think a lot of that plays out and goes, all right, you know, maybe even before the deadline, let's take a look. So we said we'd had eight teams. It looks like he's pro- he, there's a very good chance. I think it's a good enough chance that he would get traded that I would do a video on it. Let's look at Patrick Kane himself. He's, he's, he's actually only 33 years old here. Um, however, as I mentioned, he never was a great defensive player, but it's just really it's gone downhill to the point where it's, it's almost abysmal now. That might have something to do with the, the fact that he's in uh, Chicago and – Maybe it just takes the steam out of his legs a little bit to know that he's right out of it, like within 15 games of the season. But my he never has been great defensively. He's from Buffalo, New York. That's going to be interesting as we look at each team. Uh, he has a full no movement clause, as he said. It's 10.5 right now. I don't think anybody's taken that full cap hit. But if they could move him now, I imagine they would take half the cap and he would be at 10, 20, 10, 10, 5 million, 200, 250. At the deadline, of course, it becomes more manageable because you got teams with I, players that are injured I, I, on the IR and a lot of the cap has already been eaten throughout the season. So his point production. We mentioned last year he had 92 points in 78 games, which is absolutely fantastic. And you'll see that he had a minus 19. I don't really pay attention to – that's not where I get my defensive stats from is 
plus minus. Myself, I, I, I follow analytics. I don't live by analytics, but they help me out a lot on how I watch the game. I've learned a lot about the game through analytics. And Kane's expected goals against is diabolical. Maybe the worst in the league. His defensive game is almost non-existent. Now, that being the case, his offense somewhat makes up for it, even though it's not strong five on five. Most of his points come on the power play. He's a power play specialist to an elite degree. Anybody needing power play points, he's the guy you want. So, who's going to take on the team? On, on, let's say, we'll look at whether they would do it now, but, you know, we'll head more towards the possibility that they would be grabbing him on the deadline. Oh, Chicago, what would they need? I looked at it. He'll, they'll need everything. I, I don't think they would care either way. Defense isn't the biggest concern for them now, but a lot of these defensemen could be traded at the deadline anyways. So it doesn't really matter. All they really need and all they really care about right now, which seems fairly obvious with all the moves that they've made, is draft picks and prospects. So that's hopefully what will be coming back. Now, they can take on a contract. They have cap space to do it. So, and most a lot of teams may want to do that. Be, and they would be able to get more prospects and picks if they did that. I, I'm trying to spit out here because it would make it easier for the team to take on a guy like him. So, the first team, and I've heard this team a million times because I live in the city right now. The Edmonton Oilers. It has been a talk around here. Ever since the possibility that Kane could be available, that the Edmonton Oilers would be in or could be in or would want to or what have you. Now, why would you say, why would Kane want to want to go to Edmonton? Well, the theory is that Duncan Keith came here. And Duncan Keith would have been talking a lot with Patrick Kane and telling him about the city and all of those sort of things like that. I know Duncan Keith was very happy with his time here. He's retired now, and let's face it, he could play with Connor McDavid. Um, this would be the sickest power play ever. They might be able to make it to the regular, make it to the playoffs just on their power play alone if they were to do this deal. Now we know, or we should know, anyways, the Edmonton Oilers cap situation is dire. Uh, it's something that would probably have to happen at the deadline here. And it's also, as you notice, the first team I'm talking about, which to me is the least likely team that it would go to, mostly for cap space reasons, but also for team makeup reasons. Halfway through the season when his cap is five-something and Chicago is willing to absorb half his cap I think there's a good possibility that they would be in on that they could be in on this my problem with it is again he's horrible defensively the Oilers defensively were terrible last year now who would go back you gotta wait it's going to be at the deadline at that time maybe they still have a guy like Warren Fogel I think he'd have to give up a first round pick and that would be a problem because Holland is, hates to give up his first-round pick, despises it. If they still have Jesse Puglia Harvey at that time, he's, the, that, he's, he's a possibility as he has been talk of being traded as well. So if they give him, you know, that's something, and that was the talk of it happening right now. If Kane were to come over right now, Jesse Puglia Harvey would be part of that deal. Fogel would be part of that deal. They give up their first round pick and stuff like that. And you would have Hyman, McDavid, Evander Kane, who also is poor defensively, Hopkins, Dreisaitl, who is overrated defensively, and Patrick Kane. Now, the offensive potential for those two lines are absurd. No doubt about it. But I'm telling you, you got to play both ways, man, in the playoffs. you got to be able to play on your side of the puck. 
on the defensive side of the puck. Maybe they'll prove me wrong. Maybe they'll be just such an offensive juggernaut with getting Kane that they'll score so much that none of this will matter. But I personally, I'm not a fan of this deal. It could happen. What do you think, Edmonton Oilers fans? I have a feeling we're going to get a lot of people out there that think I'm crazy for not wanting Kane if he can come over and all of those sort of things like that. Like I said, I just think we have too many guys that are poor defensively already. We have a poor defense already, and our goaltending is average. That's my problem. Jesse Pugliarvi is our best two-way player, and I know you're all going to hate me when I say that, or some people are. Anybody who pays attention to his positioning and what he does, people that are looking for hitters, uh, he looks like he doesn't take checks that he should, and all of those sort of like body checks that you that a lot of people would like him to take. He's cerebral. He's a cerebral player that plays fantastic positionally. I'd hate to see him go, and I honestly think he would have more value right now than Kane. Slice me up in the comment section if you want. Sub yourself up. Let me hear it. I'm a big boy. I can handle it. Next, the Buffalo Sabres, and I mentioned this as a possibility because, first of all, he's from Buffalo. He's from Buffalo. The next thing a lot of people are going to say here is, well, what about making the playoffs? Well, here's the thing. Uh, first of all, they would have cap space if they wanted to do it now. Uh, like I said, I think it's unlikely it happens now, but it's a possibility. Uh, I, secondly, with this deal, and also it's the second team in this list, so it's not my most likely. But if they were to do this, I think they would want to make sure the king is going to commit for a longer term. And that being the case, the offense may be very tantalizing for them, plus three cups. He could have it, he could do it at the they could do it at the deadline where it's not gonna hurt them that bad. Who would go back? You know, maybe at that time you can this could be your way to get get to lose Ocpozo's contract halfway through the year. Um, you know, that would make give you room for and give you room for sure. Ocpozo, I believe, has a no trade clause, so I don't know if you'd want to do that. Um, the possibility for me, I th I don't know what their love affair with uh, with Victor Olofsson is, but I would consider that personally. I would take Kane even with the, all this poor defense because Victor Olofsson isn't that great defensively, but he's not wonderful offensively either. So I would do something like that. Maybe a second, if you can get away with just a second, and a prospect of some kind. Not Paterka, like Brandon Biro or something of that nature. If you could get away with that, would you do it, Buffalo? This is assuming now I wanted to mention. I think it's very possible that Buffalo could be in a playoff spot. I really do. I think this team... And this coaching staff could surprise this year with a lot of the moves they made. A full year with Alex Tuck. Casey Middlestat takes a big step up that everybody's been waiting for. Tage Thompson keeps up his production from last year. Jeff Skinner does. And this defense is silently becoming one of the best in the league. Is it going to be ready to be so next year? It's very young, but it's got a lot of amazing talent on it. Matthias Samuelson might be the most unknown great talent in the league right now. And Rasmus Stalin is getting better and better to under the tenure of uh, Granado. Owen Power could easily take a step up at 20 years old. He looked great already. So I think this team could surprise, and if he's in there, maybe. Maybe Kane, give him a shot, have this hometown good feeling. That's the other thing I like about Buffalo. They're trying to kind of wash them their way themselves from all the negativity and darkness of the Eichel era and bringing in a feel-good story like Kane could go a long way to doing that. 
So tell me what you think, Buffalo fans. Kane to Buffalo. Sub yourself up to my channel. Tell me in the comments section. I'll talk to you. I love talking hockey. Next, Tampa Bay Lightning. Yes, you heard me right. Tampa Bay Lightning. We have no cap room. Yeah, I never bothered them before. This is something that will probably happen in the deadline. They're almost like, assuredly going to be contenders again. They've did some fantastic moves. Getting Brandon Hagel to play. You're going to put Stamkos in the middle, I guess, apparently. Uh, you know, that reworking that line. Of, did you know that Colton Ross was in the top 50 of five-on-five five points last year? Incredible. Uh, Corey Perry would probably be better down here in the fourth line. They did get Vadislav Nemeshnikov, who's also not very good defensively. So easily they could make a move like this uh, because, and this is why, they are an analytics team-based team. -based team. Uh, they're going to know how bad Kane is defensively, which is going to be something that they would probably go hum and haw about quite a bit, actually. But this team overall, they built a team that is analytically absolutely fantastic. Fantastic, And I, when I say analytically, it goes to eye test too. Every single player, much like the Colorado Avalanche, who we may talk about later, is strong in both ends of the ice. Hagel, Stamkos, Kucherov, Killorn, Point is amazing. Nicholas Paul, Colton Ross, Corey Perry, everybody. So is it possible that they could consider with the strength of their team being so two-way strong that they would bring in somebody with three cups like Kane to strengthen a power play that kind of struggled in the playoffs last year. I mean, he's an elite power play guy no matter what at the deadline. And, you know, Point and Kalorn and these guys can do the heavy lifting around him defensively and they will live with it. I think that they could live with it based on the fact that their power play would be that much better and they would get a lot of points. It would be a lot of fun to watch him play with a guy like Braden Point in the offensive zone for sure. So do I think it's likely? I'm not sure if I do or not. It would be outside of the box for them to do something like this, but Tampa Bay is a team that does things outside of the box quite a bit. Also, I think they may be more inclined to be looking to strengthening their defense at that time. And I do believe they don't have much for draft picks and prospects. I, I have them ahead of Buffalo, Edmonton, and Edmonton, though. And that's simply because, although it doesn't totally make sense, Tampa Bay is a team that finds a way. It does things that blow your mind all the time, and I could just see him doing it. Not to mention, he has to wave to go to any one of these teams and... Um, Edmonton, I think, would be a very difficult uh, for them to give up the assets. Buffalo may not be in a spot, but Tampa Bay surely will. Which brings us to another team that surely will. And I just talked about them, the Colorado Avalanche. The Colorado Avalanche, again, are a, the standard of what building through analytics is in the NHL today. Every single and Tampa Bay would have been, but call I would say Colorado even more so than any, than ever than any other team out there in the league, including Tampa Bay. Nachuskin, McKinnon, Rant Nachuskin is just a beast on both sides of the puck. McKinnon, Ranton as well. Laniscog, well, you know, JT Confer's pretty good. Let the Ar Arturi Lettinen's unbelievable, like all of those guys are actually. Newhook, O'Connor, Cogliano, Helm. This team is completely built with two-way players that are absolutely fantastic. So you ask yourself, why would they want a Kane then? Well, Kane's offensive ability mixed in with all of that probably would not hurt this team as much as it would other teams. And their power play would be just stupid. It's possible that just for the fact that your power play might run at a 50% level in the playoffs, 
if you had him because his passing is sublime still. His offensive abilities are still just as amazing. Just, well, probably almost just as amazing as they ever have been. Um, for creativity purposes, it's something I think it's possible that they could do. And at the deadline, they would have some, they could find a way to have the cap space to do it. They could send a player that uh, maybe, you know, to even it up. I don't know who that would be at the moment, but the injuries by that time, they've got guy, they've got prospects still, if you can believe that. Martin Kaut that has been waiting for a spot for quite some time um, that they could send over to Colorado's way. And I'm pretty sure Kane, this would be like one of the top teams on his list if he wants to win a cup to go to. The problem would be they'd have to give up a first or, pro, you know, significant, a couple prospects for sure to make it happen. But I put them ahead of a few teams here simply because I think they could absorb his poor defense more than just about any other team out there. And he, he may be just a nice add to add that type of defense, to, to add that type of offense to go around this defense. And he would want to go there for sure. With this no movement clause, he holds the cards of where he's going to go. So a Colorado team that's just won the cup might be high on his list. You know what I'm saying? All right, next, let's go to the other Florida team. And the reason why I put the other Florida team here, who also is up there on the analytics side of things, that's why they just grabbed Matthew Kachuk, who's an analytics, analytically brilliant player, um, defensively and offensively. And with my eye test, same thing. Uh, I love him, I love him, I love him. The reason why I put him in here more than anything is if Tampa Bay was in it, Florida would probably be in it too. And by the time the trade deadline comes around, this team is not going to be quite as offensively based as it was when Huberto was there, or at the very least as aggressively offense, uh, offensive as it was before. And they have a bunch of players here that could, could have, again, absorb his defensive deficiency, uh, especially with Kachuk, Barkoff, Reinhardt. That line can kill you on both sides of the ice more than maybe anybody else in the league. In fact, I'll go as far as to say I think that may be the best line in the league next year. So you put in Kane with Bennett and Verhege. Hornquist maybe goes back if he's willing to do that sort of thing. They're trying to find a spot for him right now. And at that time, they could definitely use. They brought in a couple of players that they could use to make the cap work. They have. They don't have no movement clause like Colin White, for instance. In fact, I heard that Chicago was in on Colin White before Florida picked him up. So that's a possibility. Rudolph Balzers, you know, guys like that to make the cap work at the deadline. The biggest problem here is they don't really have draft picks. In fact, they have virtually no draft picks whatsoever to make this deal work. Uh, this, in my, they could do the second round in 2023. Um, they could do a guy like Colin White, but then they're going to be looking for prospects. A couple prospects added in there, and this is a go for it all the way. Bring in a three-cup guy into Florida. He won three cups. He knows how to calm a team down. Like I said, he's not great defensively. But he would improve the offense and he would bring he would also bring people to the seats. He's American, right? Florida can always use that. So they can look at some guys like uh, Gregory Denisenko if he's still flounder in there. Uh, Owen Owen Lindmark, who I actually kind of like quite a bit. He might be able to make a stand, but they really don't have much in the cupboard. That's why I don't have them higher here. But I really think that they would give it a good go, especially if Tampa's in. Tell me what you think, Florida fans. What do you think of Patrick Kane at the deadline? And that's the other reason. They're going to be for sure all in. They're going to be a playoff team all It would be a disaster if they weren't, right? So next, and this is my sneaky pick. That in the re It's the Dallas Stars. 
The Dallas Stars actually have a so I'll kind of have the cap room to do it right now. Um, and I think that they could be in on the possibility of bringing in a Patrick Kane right now. They've got $11 million in cap space. They do got to sign Jason Robertson. Now, if it's me, I'm trying to sign Jason Robertson long-term right now. And then the cap space could be difficult, but let's look at their depth chart. Uh, Dennis Gurianov at $3 million. That could make up the space. He's a younger guy that could probably help Chicago. He could... They could carry on with his development. He, he, he almost looks like he needs a, a new, fresh start somewhere, actually. And at $3 million, he could even out the cap space. But they went out and got Mason Marchman, who I love, 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 love. I, mean, I thought that was a fantastic pickup. Um, they haven't really been seemed like a team that has been terribly concerned about analytics. So lately they have. They picked up Colin Miller who is pretty strong analytically. Heaskinen's amazing, but that was a draft pick. I don't know how much they were paying attention to that. Ropo Hintz is, Robertson is, Ben and Sagan are not. But this team last year, their biggest problem was they couldn't score. Now, I think part of that is going to be, hopefully they think that that's going to change with DeBoer now in as coach, who is a very offensively my offensive-minded coach and would definitely is I mean that's what their plan is they want to get have more offense in this lineup they thought they were too defensive last year and they want to bring more offense to this lineup well if you want to do that Patrick Kane will help you a million times over that way because that's what he thinks wins games is offense he's not going to be great defensively but you could put him in with Henson Robertson and let them do all the defensive heavy lifting and he could bring a whole lot of offense to that line. Uh, maybe you would take you could put Sagan in the middle, lay Ben on the left side, and play him on the right side with him, and the old guys can go play some offense. But he would bring offense to this team. And being American, you know, uh, from the US. It would be huge for fan base and all of those sort of things like that. It certainly would sell tickets. Sponsors would love it. Tell me what you think, Dallas Stars fans. What would you think of Kane? Now, while we go back, like I said, a guy like Gurianov would be part of it. I think he would. They do have a first, I believe, they could put out there. Yep, they have a first-round pick that they could do in either 2003 or 20. I'd rather go 2024. Next year is going to be a beast of a draft if you can get away with it. And maybe another prospect. Dallas is really good at draft and development. They have some fantastic uh, Maverick Bork coming up. I don't know if you'd want to go that big, but Ty DeLandry has been working his way up. He's a possibility. Guys like that. You get Patrick Kane. Tell me what you think, Dallas fans. Patrick Kane to the Dallas Stars. Co sub yourself up. Comment in the comment section here on YouTube. And uh, let me know what you think. All right, next, the biggest rumor in the land when it comes to Patrick Kane. It's all I hear all the time. Rangers, 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 Rangers. And I have them as the third most likely team possibly going there. Do I think that he should go there? Personally, no. Because he's not a strong five-on-five five guy. And he's not very good defensively, which is the reason why he's not a strong five-on-five five guy. He does get a lot of five-on-five five points, but he has a lot of five-on-five five goals scored on him. Tons. Tons. Um, and most of his points come as plus-minus. Uh, plus-minus doesn't really mean much. His expected goals against five-on-five five is diabolically bad. And this was a team that their biggest problem last year was their five-on-five five play. However, I will say this now. They got $4.8 in cap space. This will likely happen at the deadline where cap space can be worked on a lot easier. And let's look at what they've done and what they may do to get a guy like Kane. One of the reasons why I have him as the second most likely guy is they have players in depth that they can afford to lose. 
They picked up Benny Trocek for $5 million a year for seven years. Where does that leave Philip Hedl? I guess Trocek can play on the third line, I suppose, when Hedl takes over. He, and I think he should take over. But if he does, they're going to have to give him a crap load of money, right? Now you say, well, you got to give Kane a crap load of money. Well, maybe not necessarily, but this would – you could at least take them for the year and you can work on the contract later. For a rental and a possible re-sign, Philip Hedl, I would do that straight across if I was them. I mean, seriously, I I love Philip Hedl. I think he's fantastic. He would be a huge acquisition for a rental. If you have to if if you give more, you give more. I don't know why, you know what the fight out there is going to be for Patrick Kane at the deadline. You know, it gets a little crazy sometimes. You might have to add more. Uh, maybe uh, then, you know, Nils Lundqvist and a pick or something like that. I don't think he would have to add any more than that, though. I don't think so. Would you do it, Rangers fans? Maybe Capo Caco. I mean, I wouldn't do it. For Capo Caco, I think he's one of the, the best young two-way wingers coming up in the league right now. But man, oh man, sponsors would love it. It would be the se- it would be a sexy, sexy pick. You could play him with Zabonijad and Panarin, and nobody would care about five on five or whatever. They would just love watching them play around with the puck in the offensive zone. As far as entertainment value is concerned. New York Rangers would do that deal all day. Another reason why I think it's possible that they could uh, this could happen this way is I don't think Chris Drury gives a lick about how players play defensively, or they haven't he they, he has an old school view of how players play defensively, and that I say that because he picked up guys like Sammy Blay, Ryan Reeves. Barkley Goudreau, he paid a crap load for him. He's not a great defensive player. He's like, there are a lot of room guys. He has this old school mentality. And there's a place for all of these, but they gave up Bushnevich for Samuel Play. That's He's putting huge value on it. So if you're looking for character guys that have won cups and all of those sort of things like that, I think he would do it for Kane. My question to you is, though, would you do it, Rangers fans? If Kane was available at the deadline, would you give up Hedl and all the guys that I just brought up? Comment in the comment section. Let me know because I love talking to y'all, don't you know? I do. Finally, the New York Islanders. The New York Islanders, I have them as the number one play. Oh, I forgot to look at cap space. And I know cap space is a problem. It's a terrible problem. But the reason why I have them as a number one play is I believe that there is a very, there's a difficult situation going on with Matthew Bars all here. And that difficult situation is that Matthew Bars all has not had a creative player to play with his whole career. And I think he's getting really tired of it, to tell you the honest truth. I don't have any... This is just my watching him on the ice with what he does. I can't see how it doesn't wear him down. The guy skates around in the offensive zone, does amazing stuff, and everybody stands around not knowing what to do with the puck. You've got Anders Lee. He's not a creative player. He's a great player for what he is. Up and down the wing, get in front of the net, killer shot, scores most of his goals, scrapping it out down there, and that's wonderful. But Josh Bailey is not that type of player. Uh, even um, even guys that a lot of play, people want to play with him, like Wallstrom, he's a he's a Wallstrom is a gotta have the puck on his stick type guy. He drives to the net and really not super creative in the offensive zone. Nobody on this team really is. So if you got and. For sure, you know Islanders fans, I can hear you all right now. He's the right age because they don't like young players in New York, right? 
Everybody tells me that when I do these things, if I suggest like a guy like Pulia Harvey goes to the Islanders, they're like, he's too young. There's no way they're going to bring him in. Well, Kane ain't too young. And he's won three cups. And he can play with Barzal. Bar, I think they would be dynamic together, honestly, in the offensive zone, mind you. And, you know, you can – Anders Lee is not terrible defensively. I don't know how this team – this team played well as a team defensively, even though the individual players were not all that wonderful at it, which is amazing. I don't get it. Barry Trotz isn't there anymore. The only thing – so we'll see what happens from that, um, what I mean by Barry Trotz isn't there anymore. The only reason why I think this might not be the case is if the Islanders really, again, are not in the playoff race again. And I think that's slightly possible that that is the case. But I think that if they are, Lamorello will be all over this. What do you think, Islanders fans? First of all, do you think Lou Lamorello would do something like this? Second of all, would you want it to happen? Now, what would go back? Scary. What would go back? I think. I, I think he he doesn't seem to mind giving up draft picks. Would he go as far as to give Anthony Bavillier up? He hasn't really, you know, totally knocked it out of the park. Suppose apparently, but I I wouldn't do it, but. You never know Scott Mayfield if they find another defenseman at that time. Kiefer Bellows has been floundering down there. They have so many players, young players that don't get a chance here. They're itching to leave. So, yeah, Kiefer Bellows, they could give that a chance. Maybe. Offense would be amazing. It would help the power play an awful lot, which struggles at times. And uh, it would bring people to the seats. All right. That's my full 42. I went along here, but there was a lot of teams I think could be interested in this, so I thought I'd give it a go. That's my full 42. Tell me what you think about it all. Sub yourself up. Have a great day, everybody. Okay, bye.